Today we will be mostly cooking silica. This is a little fish which has uh, herring I suppose it is but it's from I don't know where it is maybe from the Baltic herring but uh, if you look at them here they've got these lovely little skins on them so we pair them up like this so that the similar sized ones because you put salt and pepper on here on all of them and then you take that one like that and you flip it on top so it makes a little sort of sandwich and then you dip it in bread crumbs and then fry it in butter and that's it lovely stuff so there we have the white pepper very sort of finely ground that gets sprinkled on it and then this one here just a, a normal sea salt grinder and you can see I've already sort of put some salt on it yeah, just a small amount of salt the other thing that goes on it is this uh, kuivato tilli or dill dried dill that's the other special flavour and some parsley so I have to dig around to see if I've got some parsley and then this dill so let's spice it up just a little bit of pepper so we only do the top ones with all the spices that you're going to be doing got a little bit of fresh parsley so we now put that on it don't have very much oh, just a few sprigs get in there just like that give it a little bit of flavour that's all I want to do with these ones there we go, parsley not very much of it but I should flavour it up a little bit so that's those ones done and now we just take the this fillet here Put it on top, just like that. Seal it in, making a little sandwich with the herbs in between it. And these are called silica pihvit or herring pihvit. Herring steaks. Yeah, that would be the translation. So there they are in all their glory. Now we just have to put them in breadcrumbs, which I'll have over here. Put the breadcrumbs in that plate and dip them in it the surface is quite uh, damp so it should pick up the bread comes quite easily and then fry them in a cast iron pan with butter so that's what they look like without the bread crumbs and that's what they look like with the bread crumbs very light dusting of bread crumbs so we don't want to do that. This is the frying pan that was given to me by my daughter. It's the king of frying pans, perhaps even the emperor of frying pans. It comes from France. It's called De Buyer, I suppose. 1830 France. 
and it's a really big heavy skillet and let's put it on there and that's what we use for frying the sea liquor in and over there we've got the mashed potatoes going see that steam coming off it it's very difficult to get that on on camera but uh, hopefully it's captured now the other thing you have to use when you're frying it is this Valio Voy Smear. And now over to Ozzy and Jill for some wine advice. In certain quarters of Chile, there's been wild rumours about our professional romance on the programme Food and Drink on BBC. I believe these to be malicious lies. We're doing the whole of Great Britain a great service about talking about, about these different wines and bringing to the audience the flavors of the world. My first impressions on this delightful Tuscan red are that when I concentrate on the bouquet and get my nose into the glass, is it somehow the size of the glass or is it my nose that somehow it, it seems to get stuck in there? What, what are your first impressions on this delightful wine? Well, a real little jewel of Tuscany is this one, isn't it? Well, I would, I would call it just simply flamboyant, you know, fireworks just sparking up into your mouth. It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, my second thought on the aroma front would be this kind of uh, almost pig leather, almost as if uh, the scrotum of a male pig had been somehow soaked into the winemaking process to give it, you know, more animalistic kind of flavour and some, you know, oh, yeah. Right, um, let's have a little... Well, I would call that maybe yet yeah, barnyard, you know, this kind of barn flavour that you get when you mingle around the pigs, you know. <laughs> yeah, I can't agree more. That's that's exactly where you kind of take take it on and follow on from my uh, my carefully chosen words. And um, second of all, there's something here that almost is a woody kind of flavour, almost as if you're strolling in the woods, almost as if the petit sommelier has corked the wine and bollocks up his job. This is what I get. Cork, you mean? Well, yes, if you look at the colour, I mean, quite frankly, it's charcoal, isn't it? So maybe it's got something to do with that. I'm not quite sure, but it's absolutely quite something else. Yeah, and also, I can taste the feet that have trampled these grapes. Uh, the Mafia in Tuscany has probably forced the nuns of the local Catholic Church to trample these wines. These grapes, I mean. Obviously, the wine is made from the grapes. And uh, almost these nuns have, must have had their toenails painted with some Indian henna, I, I, I do believe. Somehow I get that flavour in there somehow. Right, okay, because upon, you know, upon the first sip I get something as well very quite angular, you know. Um, it just hits you always in the, that same place in your mouth. <laughs> kind of, you know, the, the back end of the tongue. Yes, right there at the very back end of the tongue. It almost always that red juicy grape that yes. the grape gets you right there and you feel I am privileged to be alive sampling these fruits of God that who has brought them into our laps to remind us what a great thing it is to be alive and human. Yes, thank you very much, Oz. Oh, Oz, yes, that was your name. Sometimes, you know, I just forget with all this wine sampling. <laughs> <laughs> Wizard of Oz, that's who I am. <laughs> very well, Jill, Jilly, Jilly is your name, Jilly? <laughs> Silly Jilly, yes. Let's drink the rest of the wine and have ourselves merry. Oh, toodaloo then.